Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Eric Carlson here. Again, I am running for Congress in the 1st Congressional District here in Illinois. Um, on running for the nomination on the Republican ticket. This is video eight of our Problems and Solutions series, and this one is on term limits. And this is one of, this would basically be part one of congressional reform, which uh, is a big part of my platform. This is something I think that most Americans agree on. Um, whether you're left or right, you realize that what's happening in Washington is just wrong on so many levels. Um, the bickering, the infighting, and not getting anything done, and the uh, not listening to the American people. There, there's a lot of, uh, there was questions about January 6th, and people wanted to know why they were there. Well, they should have had the hearing. Uh, they could, they, they should have asked the people that were there what the, why they were there. Um, granted, uh, a bunch of people did some stupid stuff, and then people got angry. Yeah, the people in Congress did a bunch of stupid shit, pissed off the American people, and some of them wound up getting a little out of control. Uh, that's a video for another story. But Congress needs to look in the mirror and wonder why so many American people on all sides are pissed at them and why their approval rating as a body is always in the toilet. Um, so we're going to go over term limits right now and this is, I'm going to give you the problems and the solutions. Problems as we know it is the people who stay there who have these careers like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Bobby Rush uh, who recently retired. These people who go there and they get so comfortable and they get used to that, that, that and you hear these stories about people who go there with the best of intentions and then get sucked into this world in Washington where they're treated like like uh, princes and princesses and they can do no wrong and it, it, it gets very you know if you're not, if you don't have strong will to avoid that to fall into that trap you're, you're gonna fall into it um, and you just become one in a body of 435 people and it's easy just to get lost in the mix and do a little bit here and there around the edges to keep your consist constituents uh, Keep them happy, just just enough to keep them happy. Throw them some crumbs, and and hopefully you know you maintain the office. So, some things I want to talk about is with term limits. Eighty percent of Americans on both sides, say it's eighty percent plus of the American population, want to see term limits, and this has been for a long time. So ask yourself, why does it never get brought up? This would be one of the first things I would do. There is I would get together with some other new representatives and some people with some common sense and we would sit down and we would write legislation limiting terms in the United States Congress, the House and the Senate. Um, and then what you need to do is a lot of people will say, well, that won't go anywhere because they'll never vote themselves down. You bring it to the American people and you put those people basically on blast and say, these are the people who think that they're better than you who want to stay here and run your lives. And make all kinds of money and get kickbacks and all the other bullshit that they do. 80% um, of the American people agree. Republican, Democrat, Independent, Green Party. Everybody wants limits. Why aren't they listening to the American people? That's kind, of, that's kind of how you get things like January 6th. When you piss off the people. But then Congress doesn't even take that message as, hey, maybe we need to look in the mirror. Maybe we did something wrong. They look at it as... No, you peons need to be put in your place. So we'll throw some of you in prison and we'll try and ruin the lives of others. This, the American people agree on. How would we do it? Well, we need to get rid of a political class. That's these people, again, who go there and make that a career, being in Washington, and career politicians at the state level also, like Michael Madigan and Lisa Madigan and the Daly family and the Stroger family and all these people who have been in power, they, they hand things down. You look at you look at Todd Stroger. When when the, Todd Stroger Sr. died, um, he was basically, his son was basically handed, like, like from a king down to the prince, you get the crown, and now you're the uh, president of the Cook County Board, the second largest county in the country, and a, a literally a multi-billion dollar organization, and you just waltz right in. Um, and people wonder why we're so screwed up here. He 
do it to ourselves because the people here don't rise up. The way these last congressional districts were drawn, and I'll go into that in another video, the people of, of Illinois should have the pitchforks and be down in Springfield right now demanding they come out of their castles and answer to the people. No more political class. These people that get there and stay there and, and you know, spend their entire life going to cocktail parties and not getting shit done for you. Ban lobbying. What I mean by that is the lobbyists that go into Washington to hit these congressmen up and basically buy them off with trips and travel packages and all this other shit and promise them money for their campaigns and everything, ban that. Take that out flat out. And also the bigger thing is a ban. Once you go to Congress, you may never, never, I mean, if you can't pass the other thing, a sitting congressman can never go back and become, and this would be retroactive to anyone who was in Congress prior to, um, you are no longer allowed to lobby. So you, you don't get to be there on, I believe it's K Street in Washington where all the lobbyists are. And then they, you know, they strong arm the congressman and promise them the world, you know, to get this legislation passed. That has to stop. So no more cush gigs when you get out. And for military generals either, I'll go into that in a separate video. But you need to revoke anybody's security clearance once they're out of office. Once they leave office, security clearance is pulled. They don't have any access to any information that anybody on the street doesn't have. So they can't influence things. I don't want to see them on TV. I don't want to hear, you know, that they're an expert on this or that. When they're out of the mix, they're out of the mix. Founding Fathers wanted people that would come, represent their people for a short term, and then leave. And then roll some more people into it. It was never intended to be a career. Politics was never intended to be a career in this country, and the federal government was never intended to be as strong as it's become. And they don't want to release that power. That's the problem you have. You can't get these people. They're dug in like ticks in Washington. You revoke their security clearance, pay cuts. Right now, uh, congressmen get paid $174,000 a year. Nancy Pelosi, I believe, is at 224 because she's a speaker, and there's a couple other, uh, the Senate, House, and, and Minority Leaders, or excuse me, the uh, the Senate Minority Leader, they they get a higher paycheck net. But the, your average congressman makes $174,000. The median income for a family in the United States right now is, let's see, uh, the last number I have is uh, 2020. Numbers aren't in for 2021 yet, but 2020, $67,521. That's what a family took in, the average American family. So about 35, 36% of what your congressman makes. Um, in 2019, now 2020 went down. We, that dropped uh, from $69,560. So it dropped a little over $2,000 from 2019 to 2020. Of course, when we got hit by COVID, the American people took a hit when they came out and they had to lock you down and make you wear masks and social distance and nobody could go to work and close down all these businesses and businesses failed. Congress didn't get a pay cut. You did. You got punished. You got told where to go. They didn't work. They, they just sat in their office and all oh, were tele, telecommuting or teleworking or whatever they call it. You need to cut this pay. At least by half. At least by half. The job is not there for these people to become wealthy. You look at, you look at the, the money that they come away with when they go there. Not only that, they have all the inside stock trader tips and the law. Look at Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi and her husband, who is a trader. If you are in Congress, you should not be allowed. Your stuff should be put in a blind trust, any investments that you have, and any members of your immediate family. That's only fair. That's uh, otherwise. That's the only way the American people can know that you're on the level, and this stuff has to be as transparent as possible. So any anybody, any Joe can get on the computer, go on there, type in to see what his congressman's investments are, where he's got his money placed. It's it's ridiculous that these people and they are so scared to do this. The Freedom of excuse me, Freedom of Information Act does not apply to members of Congress about their pay. Um, so w what they do on their own and they're the ones who voted that. So I would, I would get rid of that. I would, I would put this all in a bill, all these changes in a bill and it's not getting done right now. So what does it hurt to put the bill there, get some people to back it, get the new people, the new blood coming in, back that and make them, put them, 
put them on the spot and say, say no to this. And you know, you're going to have people say, well, the Speaker of the House would never allow it to get to the floor for a vote. Put him on blast too. Um, you're going to have a Republican Speaker. To, so you might get this done. You might get this done. I mean, it's a long shot, but you might get it done. But it needs to happen. It at least needs to be put in front of the American people and let your congressman sit there and say, no, I think you guys are fools and I want to stay here forever because it's a cush gig and I'm going to become a multimillionaire while I'm here. Pay cuts for them. Also, no pensions ever, flat out, across the board. When they get out, they max out and it depends. It varies on how long they were there, um, how many years. But if you're over 62, if you're over 62 years old, or, and uh, have done five years in Congress, you're, you get 80% of your pay. If you, so if you were a congressman in five years and happen to be 62, you could retire then and have $139,000 a year for the rest of your life. Do you realize $139,000 a year, but all the, all the uh, people that are retired out of the house right now, I could take that money, I could literally house and train for jobs every homeless veteran in the state of Illinois and have money left over with that money. These people don't need that money. Most of them are attorneys and, and have a lot of money when they come in there. Most of them are very wealthy. There are more there are more Democrat millionaires in Congress than there are Republicans. A lot of people don't know that. They, th they keep telling you that the Democrats are the party of the working people. Well, the money would... Tell you, tell you different. You know, Nancy Nancy Pelosi, I believe, is over a hundred. Her net worth, her and her husband, is over a hundred million dollars. How does that happen on a government salary? No more pensions. No more pensions for all these people. That's not what they're there for. This this is what makes these people stay there. This is what makes them fight this. The term limits. They don't want to leave that. They don't want to leave that because they get a lot of stuff. They get a lot of stuff, and you're paying for it. That's your money. No more. If, if I get there, I will do everything in my power to get all this stuff. I will, I will pound my shoe on the, on the table, on the floor of the house to get this stuff. To you, Keep an eye on C-SPAN if, if I should manage to get there. No perks for these guys. You realize they have a death benefit. If a member of Congress dies while in office... Their family gets 170, they get one year of pay, $174,000. So you could go there as a congressman and have terrible health, have not taken care of yourself for whatever reason, drop dead. Now that's not the problem with the American people. You just died. Nobody else gets this. Nobody else on the street. 174000 and I believe the, uh, the life insurance, if you're killed in the military... If you're killed in action in the military, I believe it's a hundred thousand now. They might have upped it since then, but it's less than this. So if you're a congressman sitting on your ass in Washington and you happen to have too many burritos and have a heart attack, your family gets one hundred seventy-four thousand. If your kid's over in Syria, uh, trying to run missions over there and gets blown up by an IED, you get about eh, two thirds of that. You think that's fair? You think these people have really earned that? That should not be part of their package. Um, lifetime access. Uh, it was interesting to see this one. They, they get lifetime after they leave, after they retire, they get lifetime access. So they can come back to Congress and they have access to free parking at, at the uh, Capitol. They get to come in. They get to dine in, in, the, uh, in the dining room there. And they also get access to the floor. So they can come down and sit, you know, they, they can be down there talking to their old buddies and stuff and maybe, you know, maybe, you know, rubbing a little elbows and getting getting a little stuff done and maybe little whispers in the ear about something, this or that. Um, no, once you're out, you're out. You're gone. Stay away from there. Nobody else gets to go in there. If, if you've been defeated or if you've decided to retire, you're done. Get out of it. We don't need you there. Gym membership. I think uh, I think it said that they pay twenty five dollars a month, which is actually a dollar less than I pay here. And they've got an indoor pool and and all the things. That's your tax dollars that go for that maintenance. Do you really think twenty five dollars a month is upkeeping this this fancy gym that they have there? That needs to go the way of the dodo bird. Or 
they need to start ponying up out of their own pocket. And all these things like travel perks and everything, if you're making $174,000 a year, you should be paying for your own damn travel. I don't know anybody, uh, carpenters out there who are making $75,000, $80,000 a year. Nobody pays for their travel back and forth to work, especially not with these gas prices approaching $4 a gallon here. Um, yeah, no more no more money for that. You you pay out of your pocket. That's it. That's it. I can see a small stipend to go back to your constituents every week, but you should be going back there anyway. That's on you. Okay, my plan, my solution here. I'll slide you over just a little bit. 12 years total, maximum, in Washington, D.C. And this doesn't include if they want to run for president after this or if they have any aspirations. That's an entirely different animal. But as far as Congress, to get these people, presidency already has term limits. Um, 12 years max. Now, you could do that. You could break it down six years in the House and six in the Senate, or you could do two or four years in the House and then decide to run for Senate. But then you're only going to be there for 10 years or eight years, um, depending on that. Or you could do a full 12 years in the House. You know, you, If you can't learn the job in, in three or four years, your first three or four years there, and then you know work up to be a senior worker there, then there's something wrong. Or you could do 12 years in the Senate. And how you would do that is you wouldn't get to serve in the House. And I would suggest that these politicians work their way up through the state, through a state office. So if you, this would allow the people to see them. You get these people, like, and I'm kind of hypocritical here, even though I've never run for anything. I'm running for Congress, but uh, I'm not running for the Senate. The, this would give the chance for the people of the state to see them at the state level and see how they work. And they need to have a record before they take this high office in the Senate to represent their state. One of only a hundred people. Um, so this this would kind of weed through people, rather rather than um, you know if you had a really good state senator, a really good speaker, or a really good governor who wanted to run for senate. That's that would be ideal to send those people. But just we've got we've got a clown in Dick Durbin, who's been there for God only knows he's he's close to thirty years too, if if not more. Um, I get them confused. So many of them have been there for so long, I can't even keep, it, it, you know, when you, when you look at uh, Leahy and Schumer and all these people in the Senate, um, it's it's ridiculous. There, there's no reason for these people to be there. They stagnate this country. There is no new ideas. They live in a bubble. They have no idea what it's like to get dirt under your fingernails. They have no idea. They'll come and they'll placate you, and they might come out and shake hands around election time, and, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll have my staff look into it and everything for you, and all, all the typical bullshit. And you, you just keep voting for them because it's a little like, oh, well, who else is going to do it? I don't want to be doing this, and I wish, I wish some very good leaders would step up. But again... They won't do it because they get their name and their family and the pain that they have to go through to get their name dragged through the mud and a bunch of bullshit slung about them by leftist media. Let the American people decide. Let the people make, just like these videos. This is why I'm doing these. This way everybody can see where I stand on things. <clears throat> There's a video record. You can go back and look at it. Um, I don't see any other candidates doing that. I see they, they put a few bullet points up on their thing and you know then they'll give you the... Oh, you know, you could have hope and change. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, we're going to have hope and change. Yeah, but what does that mean? What are we hoping for? Well, hope. We're going to have hope. Well, what kind of change? Well, yeah, we're going to change. We're going to change things. But what kind of change? They never explain that stuff. There's never any details. Um, pause it. And that's the reality of doing videos from home. But uh, anyway... This would be the plan to limit uh, term limits. And you see some of the stuff they're getting. And this is just a short list of your money that's being spent on people who a lot of them don't deserve to be there. Uh, a lot of them are ineffective. And uh, I'm hoping to change that. So I'm asking for your, your, for your support. Again, my name is Eric Carlson. I'm running for the Republican nomination for Congress in the 1st Congressional District of Illinois. Thank you.